This guy cools the solar panels with ambient air that comes through these holes and moves under the panels, and it is well known that reducing the temperature of panels by 10 degrees increases their electricity production by about 4%. In addition, cooling the panels with air leads to heating of the air up to 30 degrees Celsius and the hot air comes inside the house and provides its heating. If the air temperature is lower, the warm air does not go into the house but into the input of this heat pump. It is well known that if the temperature of the warm air is 10 or 15 degrees higher than the ambient temperature, the electricity consumption of the heat pump is reduced by one and a half times. Unfortunately, this all-space heating is carried out only during sunny hours and covers only a few percent of the annual heating needs of the house and the rest of the needs are covered by traditional heating. So, let's increase the share of solar energy to 100% so that the house is heated only by solar energy with a temperature about 20 degrees or a lower temperature for the heat pump. The air with a temperature of more than 20 degrees Celsius will not go into the rooms of the house, but it will heat the water inside this heat storage, so that the thermal energy of the water will heat the rooms in the evening and at night. These are my experiments, and one of my future videos will describe them in more detail. Also, we can abandon this heat storage and take the example of this house, where hot air goes through these tunnels and heats up the concrete floor. The thermal energy will take several hours to overcome the concrete layer from the tunnels to the floor surface. So, these solar panels will transfer their heat to this concrete floor inside this house through this circulation by this fan. The second mode of operation of the fan is the circulation of the warm air from the solar panels not through the house but through this pit with stones, the temperature of which will change in this range during the seven months of the heating season. We can take this thermal energy both day and night thanks to this second fan that creates this air flow and sends it either into this concrete floor tunnels or into this heat pump, which is similar to that guy's heat pump. The pit has this thermal insulation with a thickness of up to 20 cm and this covering is crushed stone, slabs or soil. Let's assume that our house has 100 square meters of solar panels and is located in the same region as that guy's house, southeastern Canada, near the city of Fredericton. The city has this climate during the seven months of its heating season, and we see that it is a very cold region, and it has few sunny days. This is my rough estimate of the total construction cost of the entire heating system of that house, but it will be one and a half times cheaper if we abandon these two methods when we gave the house air with a temperature of almost 30 degrees Celsius without the heat pump. These are approximately such pipes, and they may be located underground or in trenches. These pipes must have thermal insulation, and its thickness here can be more than 10 cm, although these pipes can also have thermal insulation in case of their large lengths. Now I am showing how that guy made a motorized damper, and here I have drawn up a rough plan of our dampers, and I remind you that the cost of all these dampers is approximately estimated here. We also know that these pipes must be closed at night and during non-sunny hours to stop this gravitational circulation, and for example, this can be achieved by these positions of the dampers. During 90% of the solar hours, the panels will be cooled by this method, with heat transferring into the pit, and here I wrote the average temperature of the stones in the upper part of the pit, month by month. This high temperature of the stones in October allows these kilowatt hours of heat to be transferred to the concrete floor of the house, and a similar situation will also be at the end of April. During the remaining 10% of the solar hours, the panels are cooled by this method, which gives the concrete floor of the house these kilowatt hours of heat with a temperature of almost 30 degrees Celsius. We see that this is carried out only in this month, two or three hours around the perfectly sunny midday. But now I am showing the main method of heating the house when the solar panels transfer the thermal energy into the pit, and then the warm air goes to the input of the heat pump, which produces these kilowatt hours of heat for rooms of the house. 
Also, let's remember that the gas heat pump can take air not only from under the solar panels, but also from the street. And this is the heat that is produced by our heat pump in traditional mode from the street air. We can see the possibility of using the traditional mode here, and we need it to fully cover this heating needs of a 100 square meter house near Fredericton. Nevertheless, we could completely get rid of this traditional mode if we used 200 square meters of solar panels instead of 100 square meters, or if we build our house in a sunnier and warmer region. For example, the central United States has almost twice as many sunny days in winter, and the heating needs of the winter months are about one and a half times less. In addition, these sunny and warm regions can increase the share of this high temperature heat to more than 30 or 50 percent, while now this heat covers only 10 percent of these annual heating needs. It is important to say that we use this traditional mode during the warmest hours, during daylight hours, and this solution results in this average ambient temperature for the heat pump. But night temperatures can drop to 15 or 20 degrees Celsius below zero, and therefore we give the heat pump not this cold ambient air, but this temperature of the air from the pit with stones. Let me explain to you what these numbers mean. This is the transfer of thermal energy from the solar panels into the pit when the temperature of the stones is less than 20 or 25 degrees. These kilowatt hours of heat are supplemented by these kilowatt hours which describe these heat leaks, this heat flow from groundwater, accumulation of heat by the surrounding soil, movements of heat due to changes in this temperature of the stones. These numbers are the electrical component of the heat pump, which converts this amount of solar heat with an efficiency that was based on this temperature according to this graph of an air-to-air -air heat pump. This graph was also used to calculate this electrical component based on this ambient temperature. This is my attempt to estimate the power consumption of those two fans, and we see that the first fan is five parallel fans. Thermostats turn off a certain number of the fans if the temperature difference between these points is less than 10 degrees. We must add this electricity to this electricity consumption of both heat pump modes. Therefore, we come to the conclusion that the total annual electricity consumption of this entire system is approximately 5000 kWh, but it will be several times less in a warmer and sunnier climate. Let me remind you that cooling solar panels increases their efficiency, and every degree of decrease in their temperature increases their electricity production by almost half a percent. Unfortunately, the average temperature of our solar panels will be about 6 degrees higher than for these cases of traditional panels, which are cooled naturally both on this south side and on this north side. That is why 100 square meters of our solar panels will produce 150 kilowatt hours less electricity compared to these cases, but up to 170 kilowatt hours more compared to these cases of traditional panels, which have poor cooling of their north side. These were the conclusions for seven months of the heating season, but the remaining five months are more interesting when we have to cool our solar panels with ambient air. For example, in this way, when several of these five fans produce this movement of ambient air through the panels, but unfortunately the increase in electricity production is approximately equal to the electricity consumption of the fans. In addition, we can sometimes cool the panels with this cold air from the pit, because the stones are constantly cooled by these heat leaks into the groundwater. If the power of those heat leaks is such, we can cool the panels two or three days per season in 30 degree weather, although it would be better to use this method to cool the house through those tunnels with annual savings of up to 100 kilowatt hours of electricity. But a more interesting idea is to use this second fan to cool the pit with ambient air at night and in the morning in this way. We know that the ambient air temperature at night is usually about 10 degrees lower than in the middle of a sunny day, when the air from the cold stones will cool our panels. If we don't want to use those fans in the summer, we have to remove these walls at the beginning of May, so that the ambient air moves between the panels and this thermal insulation thanks to the gravitational circulation of warmer air. 